Hey there, and welcome back again to Yes, a Stripper Podcast. On this podcast, we'll discuss how classifying each other as people and workers is dangerous to society and marginalized groups of people. We'll also talk about the climate in and outside of the strip clubs and all of the amazing things that strippers do. And of course, we'll talk about all of the things in between. I'm your queen, A.M. Davies, and this is Yes, a Stripper Podcast. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Yes, a Stripper podcast. Today's format is very different. Uh, We decided to have strippers call in from all over the world. We have mostly American strippers, but also from the UK and from Canada as well. And uh, the reason I wanted to do a podcast this way, an episode this way, is because I really wanted to hear other people's voices and get a real idea of what's going on with them. And I just wanted to listen. And I was telling somebody the other day about how throughout this journey that I've been on, which is being an advocate for strippers, that I had to learn over time how to truly listen. And I thought I was a good listener for a long time. And um, it kind of just dawned on me overnight one day that I wasn't really truly listening to what strippers want or what they're going through. I had learned all this new information and I was just spitting it back at them as information that they needed to know. And it was the only information they needed to know. And it was the right information. And I didn't take the time to sit back and think of their perspectives or their individual experiences. And so that's why we're having this, this format today Um, basically, so I can shut the fuck up as much as possible, (laughs) which is really hard for me to do and just listen to what's going on in their world. Because quite frankly, I spent a lot of my time being very angry at, at club managers and owners, but there are people out there that are at least trying to do the right thing. And, um, I think that I need to be reminded that people are people and in every industry and in every part of life. There are people who do things that you really like and appreciate and people who do things that you don't. And the strip club industry is no different. It's made up of, a, of people. And it's how people choose to be, not about how owners or employers of strip clubs choose to be. It's how those people choose to be. And that's what the real crux of all of this is. It's determining who's helping and who's hurting. And to create a dialogue around that so we can all learn and figure out how to support each other because this is going to take a lifetime to reform this industry and create happiness and abundance around it. So we're not doing four for one today. We're not doing stripper tips. We are just listening to these amazing dancers tell their stories and to connect with them. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, our next caller is Andrea. Very excited about this call. Hi, Andrea. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Doing all right. <laughs> Good, yeah. So can you tell everyone where you're calling from today? Um, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Great. And uh, we have been chatting a bit, gratefully and thankfully so. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that we're trying to figure out is what was work life like before COVID-19 as far as how you were being treated, were you making money, do you understand your rights as a worker, et cetera? Well, uh, before COVID-19, well, I mean, I um, unfortunately, you know, uh, had some issues pop up before COVID hit, but I mean, yeah, before all this, uh, you know, quarantine, shit uh sorry can i cuss yeah of course okay okay like, yeah. uh, so uh before all this shit hit the fan um i mean life as a stripper was um it depended it depended on how you you know treated yourself really um you know it, it was fair sometimes it was unfair most of the time yeah um you know where, where at least i was it, it, it was a little difficult um I, I imagine that it's probably the same at most clubs um i liked the club that i was at um but uh yeah uh covid made it a little bit more difficult considering there's like no strippers now (laughs) yeah there's no strippers well online there's a bunch of them well i know yeah like i was gonna hop online but i'm like uh (laughs) it's just so so very saturated um do you when when the closures happened were you 
Well, first of all, were you working at the time of closures? Were you actively stripping? No, I was not. Um, well, I mean, I was dancing a couple of times at Spirit Rhino, but I just, I, I, I didn't, I hate Rhino. That's where I started. And uh, uh, it was just, you know, it, it, they, they have a really high um, caliber of dancer. Yeah. <laughs> and it just brings with it, you know, um, I don't know, just that high caliber dancer, your, your stereotypical, you know. Dancer. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure to be a high, a high performer there as far as like, high number of dance sales, uh, looks, appearances. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so like I liked my old club because I like I liked the girls that I was with. For, so for yeah. me for right now, I, I mean if I didn't have to be with any girls, <laughs> I would love it. For me, the girls there are just bitches to me. At the Rhino. Yeah. It's it's a lot more cutthroat. I definitely experienced some of that as well. Um and I myself was one of those people, you know. We grow and evolve through the right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, do you feel comfortable talking at all about your experiences or would you prefer to not do that? Oh, I would love to do that. Okay, great. Can you give us a, a rundown? Of, uh, of what happened? Yeah. Um, why weren't you working before COVID-19 hit? Well, because on um, December 21st, it was a Friday night. It was like 4.30 in the morning. Um, I was turning in money for a dance and the girl in front of me, um, the woman in front of me was Veronica. Um, she was trying to clock out at 4.30 in the morning. It's a pretty just time to leave. Um, and the manager said to her, well, you didn't tip me yet. And you didn't tip me last weekend either. Why should I let you go? And she seemed really upset about it. She was like, dude, I made like 200 bucks tonight. And it was pretty much the same thing as you know the weekend before. Do I have to tip you? Is it mandatory? And he said, yes. And so I just, I, I overheard all this and I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, so I, you know, I interjected and I was like, hey, I just wanna let you know that our contract clearly states that it's optional. Like it's not mandatory. And this manager, you know, kind of like looked down at the ground was like kicking his foot. And he's like, well, um, the owner says that it is mandatory. And all I said was, okay, well then if the, if the owner said that he's wrong. And that was that. Mm -hmm. uh, the next morning I was um, suspended I'm putting air quotes suspended okay. by the uh by the owner in our facebook group chat um he said you know he tagged me at harmony or whatever and said um you don't talk about uh badly about me and like what i do i can do whatever i want uh saying that i was suspended until february 1st for talking bad about him and so i private messaged him and i was like hey there's miscommunication i didn't talk bad about you i i only corrected him about our contract so him and I had an altercation, whatever, privately. Uh, ultimately, I was still suspended until February 1st. Um, but in the group chat, the next response um, after he like just laid into me was from the girl that I was sticking up for that night. And she said, wait, why is Harmony suspended? Like she was being professional, she's being sweet. She only stuck up for our contract, which is true. Um, and the next response after her was the owner firing her immediately on the spot. He said, just like that, boom, you don't have a contract with us anymore does anyone else want to take a turn is what he said and uh so that's uh that's what happened there uh uh that, yeah yeah I mean it, it, it upset me so much that like I mean it even still when I think about it like I, I could cry about it it's mm -hmm. just so it's so wrong you know that's all it is it's just wrong mm -hmm. um but when, when I tried to come back on February 1st it didn't hit me until the night before February 1st I was like wait he's not even going to let me back. There's no way he's been wanting to get rid of me from the moment that I started working there. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I just always knew he didn't like me. Mm -hmm. Um, I always told the girls about their rights, what an independent contractor is, what an employee is, mm -hmm. you know, cause I've had a lot of experience in that, like yeah. beyond stripping. And, uh, so yeah, when I tried to come back, he pulled out some, you know, bullshit, uh, excuse of having screenshots of me having a conversation. It was just, all of his drawn out making stuff up and just it totally getting the truth yeah totally and well yeah, just it seems like that's too common <laughs> at yeah. yes and as mentioned with one of the other callers on this episode you are behaving like a responsible adult <laughs> and right. your bosses are not right and it's infuriating it is, and so many dancers just take it, you know? 
yeah they accept it and like that's like i guess that's the difference that's why i'm doing what i'm doing like like how how can you like i can't i literally can't i would like mm, crawl out of my yeah. skin i think that there's misconceptions i think that there's a, a ton of gaslighting mental and emotional abuse in this industry that i love it's weird i love this industry but i see you know what i love about it the women the workers yeah. That's what I love. But everything else I have a real fucking problem with. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it takes a certain, you know, kind of breed to, to be a dancer. Right. Um, and yeah. especially where I'm at, like in Omaha, Nebraska, it's so conservative. Like, so it's just cool to see who I'm dancing with. I mean, these girls are, they're, they're normal women. They have, I mean, some of them have husbands at home. Sorry, patrons. But like, <laughs> some of them have husbands and, and, you know, have kids and like living normal lives. But they're, we, we chose to be dancers. And that's just kind of cool. Yeah. But, yeah, but beyond that, I mean, I don't know. The, the the manager seems to be one type of breed throughout. The owner, one type of breed throughout. Yeah. I mean, there's cool clubs here and there, but like. Yeah, I mean, we actually all have had some positive stories on this episode already about managers that are that are and owners that are being helpful. And so mm -hmm. I guess that would not be the case with this club, as far as I'm sure you're still in contact with some of your coworkers, but. Um, have they received supportive information during this time, like such as file for your taxes to get your stimulus check, file for unemployment to get support? No. The the owner of my uh, my last club has been telling the girls that they cannot get unemployment, and that if they want to try, they have to be on on the phone for six hours or so just to even try, okay. and it, it infuriates me because these these women actually won't uh, won't talk to me. You, you mentioned I probably still talk to my ex-coworkers uh, they won't speak to me out of fear and so i i, I oh, they don't want to get fired oh yeah or or sued like he actually he actually threatens lawsuits and he actually files some of them even like knowing that they're frivolous he's, he still files because it scares the dancers and to never you know a, um acting out mm -hmm. um so so yeah he he's been telling them that they can't get unemployment well, for everybody listening out there, that's completely false information right. and true. We actually got a report from a stripper in Virginia where they don't officially recognize dancers as employees, and she got unemployment money. Right. Well, and so it's same here in Nebraska. Um, yeah. We're considered independent contractors right now, but I, I've I haven't received it yet. But I mean, I, I've applied. I mean, it'd be silly not to. But so, th so these women are just not applying, assuming yeah. they can't get it. Yeah. Well, listen, I really am so proud of you for standing up for other people and for yourself. Um, it takes a lot of courage to do that. So thank you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email us at yes, a stripper podcast at gmail.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at yes, a stripper podcast. And you can catch the show on YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere that you can find podcasts. We hope you tune in next week. I've been your host, A.M. Davies. See you soon.